Hey everyone, so we're looking at a company called Nelnet out of Lincoln, Nebraska today. And I really need to do a shout out to Arch Capital because they did a far deeper dive than me into this business and broke it all down and really helped me understand this. They have a podcast called Chit Chat Money. Please go check that out if you're interested more into this company. Now I'm going to go through my opinion and my interpretation of this. So it's not exactly the same, but there's more information out there. So please check that out. Now, the first question I have is, well, just what is Nelnet? And this is one of the more difficult questions. You would think it should be pretty easy to explain, but because they're a diversified little conglomerate out of Lincoln, Nebraska, they're about a 3 billion, a little bit over 3 billion market cap business at the moment. 3.3 billion, I think last time I checked, depending on when you're watching this. As conglomerates go, if we're comparing to say Berkshire Hathaway, it's tiny, but it's still a pretty big business. 3 billion is nothing nothing to joke about. The conglomerate structure and how they think about things, I'm going to quote directly from the chairman, Mike Dunlap here. So Nelnet are looking for these things inside their business. They're looking for a long-term perspective on things. They're looking for moats. They're focusing on free cash flow. They're focusing on diversification. They want to be opportunistic and contrarian and don't run with the crowd. And they want to have a very disciplined use of debt. Now that all sounds really good. So let's dive into this one a little bit further because let's just, you know, they talk the talk. Well, I want to make sure they can walk the walk. Now for a company like this being in America, this is going to be, you're going to get access to this on most brokerage platforms. I use interactive brokers as a link in the description. That'll give you access to not only American companies, but companies from a lot of different countries throughout the world. I've got demo videos here on the channel. I highly recommend. Yeah, link in the description. Let's jump into the different parts of this business because as a conglomerate, we have to kind of break down all the different segments. Some of them are related to each other. Some of them are not. This is how you get an understanding of what is actually going on here in this business. And let me start with probably the, the thing that scares a lot of people away the most, which is what they call the student loan book part of their business. So back before 2010, this was the main focus of the business. And then after the GFC, what happened, the government changed. So the Obama government came in and changed the rules that all student loan programs are going to be issued by the government only. They can't be done through private enterprises anymore. And that's what Nelnet were doing. So no more student loans for Nelnet can be issued. So here they are with a pretty radical change happening in their business sitting on this large loan book that they can no longer add to and is slowly getting paid back. Essentially, the term for this is called a melting ice cube. They've been able to uh, prolong this melting ice cube and add to the ice, but it's still melting by acquiring other businesses' uh, student loan books and bringing them into Nelnet. So let's say a company had seven years worth of student loans still to go. Nelnet might go and pay four and a half, five years worth of those, knowing that they're going to get seven years worth of payments back. A company might sell that to them because they just want to get out of that part of the business. They don't want to service that anymore, whatever it is. And Nelnet can bring it in because they've got, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, a servicing part of this business too. So it's still a melting ice cube and they've got about, I think it's about 13 billion in remaining loan value in the ice cube right now. Uh, they earn interest on the remaining loan and that value is going to be about 1.5 billion to be spread out over the next 10 to 12 years and then it's going to be gone. So now that are taking these proceeds and investing it into new things, of course, that was the change of direction back in 2010. And this is where the money has been going. The first thing is, is that student loan servicing division that I just mentioned earlier. So see Nelnet are helping students and their families manage and pay back their student loans through a customer service arm of their business, loan management tools, uh, support for the borrowers who may be struggling, things like that. See, they just acquired a business called Great Lakes, which was also servicing loans. And now combined, they have about 40% of the market share for servicing student loans. And the biggest customer here is now the government because the government took over all these student loans and have been issuing them for the last, what's that, 13 years. Now, the government being the biggest client here, they got they took over all these student loans and issued student loans, but they don't have the capacity and skills to service all of these loans and deal with customer service. So they outsource that to a company like Nelnet. And this is a pretty tough business, I would say. The government contracts are kind of fickle. They're kind of complicated. Governments change and they have to renegotiate contracts all the time. So it can be a bit annoying. There have been issues in the past as well with these contracts, but it does make about $60 million in operating income per year. Now, another area they've been investing in is called Nelnet Business Services, pretty boring name, but that's school payment software, essentially. And I'm pretty familiar with this because they've got a piece of software called Fax, F-A-C-T-S, and it's very sticky software. Let me kind of explain what it is. See, they partner with, I think it's about 11,000 schools, university, colleges throughout the world to process the tuition payments and the fees 
fees. The platform that they have enables families to yeah, essentially pay for their education and they use this particular software to do that. There are other businesses inside of this segment where they've got like digital textbooks and online courseware and student information systems and, and stuff like that. But this is really kind of critical software to education systems. And I know that 10, 12 years ago when I was a teacher back in a school in Australia, they had this FACTS fax uh, software. It is extremely sticky. Their churn rates are 98%. I think it's closer to 99%. And the education system and the tuition payments is it's it's critical software you can't pull it out it's it's going to be near impossible too so i really like sticky software i think this is a great business all right next is nelnet renewables so we're talking renewable energy here and this is where a lot of investment has been going of late they're essentially investing in solar energy projects throughout america they get tax cuts for the conglomerate, the whole nail net as a business, they get tax cuts by like using a lot of their money in the solar industry. And that's pretty cool because they can apply those tax credits into other parts of their conglomerate, which is pretty cool. Cool little trick. The cash flow for these projects is potentially 40 years long. So they're thinking really long term here, which is cool. A very delayed gratification approach on the cash flows here. It's got a high upfront investment, but long, steady, reliable cash flows hopefully out into the future. I like this business in theory. I don't know how technology is going to radically change the energy industry, but I like the fact that they've gone to sort of down the renewables path. As solar infrastructure gets better, this is going to become more affordable and more people are going to want to go towards renewables anyway. I think they're on an interesting trend here and I like the long-term thinking of this. I don't know how it's going to actually play out, but I think it's a pretty good use of money. They, they, they're getting payback. The reliable cash flow that this can generate is should be really good on paper. So it's just going to be a matter of whether that plays out or not. Now, the next segment we're going to look at is called Allo Communications. Now, they have actually only 40% ownership in this. So it's not, it's only a minority ownership. Now, this is laying fiber optic cables to provide fast internet in a few states in America. Uh, again, this is a very delayed gratification project on the cash flows, high upfront investment, but cash comes in for a long time in the future. Now, Allo customers are exceptionally happy with this product. It has changed entire communities. And I think this is really cool. Some like Lincoln, Nebraska in particular, they had some of the slowest internet speeds going around in just Nebraska. For a big city that is not gonna be good enough, how are you gonna attract people to live in your city if you don't have good internet? Moving to Allo um, Fiber Optics, the city has become like competitive in the rest of the world again. So it's really important for governments and states and cities to have good internet to attract people to those uh, places because how many times have you said, oh, the internet here sucks? Oh, the internet here is slow. Anything like that. It's one of the most frustrating things we deal with in our lives. So I like this business a lot. I think this is really smart. So even though this is quite a competitive space, there's plenty of other businesses doing the exact same thing. I think there's still a lot of overlooked cities and towns throughout America that don't have fiber infrastructure yet. So I think there's plenty of runway here to go. All right, now let's move on to one of their newer segments called Nelnet Bank. Yes, a bank. I started this just in 2020. They offer loans for education and consumer loans. It's been, it's off to a good start. They made $13 million in profit last year, but this is a tiny little bank that's only just getting going kind of thing. So it's another avenue for Nelnet to pour money into if they see success here. So I'm okay with that. I think banks are an interesting business. They've been getting uh, hammered of late, but this is a tiny little bank making up a very small percentage of their business at the moment. Essentially, I'm going to call it zero when we get to the valuation. Now, the last segment, well, let's just call it the other investments. So there's some real estate investments in this segment. They've got a stake in a company called Huddle, H-U-D-L, and some other random investments. Now, Huddle is actually really cool. Huddle is sport film footage for schools and clubs. They essentially have a monopoly in this space. So think like high school football or high school basketball or college hockey or soccer or whatever it is they've been able to pull in all of this uh, footage of these games and put it into one place so essentially if you're at a, another high school and you want to watch the tape for the next team that you're going to face you're going to need a huddle subscription to to watch that if you're a college and you're looking for scouting potential basketball players you're going to need a huddle subscription to watch these players play in the, all their games throughout 
the high school or college arena. So essentially all high school sports programs have subscriptions to Huddle. There is nowhere else to get this footage. And it's just, it's very critical to the coaches, scouts, and broadcasters. Now, they only have a small stake in this business, 20%, but this is a huge business now, and it is growing quickly. For a business that essentially has a monopoly, this is a very valuable investment. I'll go through the valuation a little bit later on this one, but I think you'll be very surprised how awesome that business is. All right, so I think I've covered all the different segments for Nelnet so far. I hope you've got a bit of an understanding of what's going on here and that it's a conglomerate. They have these different segments of the business and it's diversified. And I do think it is worth understanding, even though it is a little bit trickier to understand than most. I still need to go through management, which we're going to look at really closely in the next episode, the runway for growth of the business, uh, the reinvestment rates, which is really interesting, risks that the business might face. And then we'll finally get to evaluation at the end, but we've got a fair bit more to cover. And I really want to highlight in particular, how amazing the management is here. And I think this is a big reason for me being interested in this in the first place. Let's do that in the next episode and I'll see you then.